I'm Vanessa Keir. This is Before You Upgrade to Scrivener 3 for Windows. So at long last, the wait for Windows people to get Scrivener 3 is over. In this video, I'm going to go over a few points you should be aware of before you go ahead and upgrade. Here are some key points to know about upgrading. First of all, it's possible to have both Scrivener 1 and Scrivener 3 installed on your computer at the same time. So if you decide you don't like Scrivener 3, you don't have to worry, you still have the old version to work from. So Scrivener 3 can open your current Scrivener 1 projects, but it's going to need to convert them. However, it will make a backup of the Scrivener 1 project before it converts, so that if you don't like the conversion, then you can go and work in your current project in Scrivener 1. However, if you are paranoid, you can always go ahead and make a separate folder on your computer to hold Scrivener 1 backups. And then from inside Scrivener 1, go ahead and do individual backups of each of your projects. And if you're not sure how to do that, I have a video on my YouTube channel on how to back up your Scrivener project. So Scrivener 3 is a paid upgrade and you download a free trial, whether or not you're going to buy it or just try it out. So you have the Scrivener 30 day trial period and that's 30 days, not actually um, consecutive days. So what that means is if you open it March 1st, and then you don't open it again till April 1st, that's only two opens, so that's only two days of your trial. If you purchase Scrivener 1 after November 20th, 2017, you get a free upgrade. If you bought it before then, you get a 49% discount. There are some minimum technical specifications you need for running Scrivener 3. First of all, you need to know that it comes in either a 64-bit or a 32-bit version. The default on the website is to download the 64-bit. If you don't know which your computer is running, on the next slide I'll talk you through how to find out. You also need to be running at least Windows 7, Service Pack 1 or above, and you need at least the .NET Framework 4.6.2 or above. Now, Finding out which .NET framework you have is pretty techy, so I'm not going to go over that. Let's just say that if you have trouble downloading Scrivener 3 and installing it, you might want to look into that as being a possible reason. So if you're not sure if you're running 32-bit or 64-bit Windows, you can check it in the following way. In Windows 10, Press the Windows key and the letter I to open Settings. Choose System, and then in the left-hand navigation pane, choose About, and look for the system type. In Windows 8, 7, or Vista, go to Control Panel, and then look for System, and then at the bottom, under System, look for System Type. So whether or not you're going to just try it out or you know you want to buy it, you need to download the free trial. So you go to Literature and Latte, Scrivener, Download. And then when you're ready to buy, there'll be a pop-up window when you open Scrivener 3 and just tell it to upgrade from an older version. And in order to upgrade, you're going to need to know the email address you used when purchasing version 1. And you're going to need to know your license key. Now, if you have version 1 open, when you go to register version 3, Scrivener might be able to pull the license key for you. Otherwise, you'll need to look up your registration information from when you bought version 1 and enter it in in order to get the discount. So let's take a brief look at the differences between Scrivener 1 and Scrivener 3. So this is Scrivener 1. Notice the type and the size of the icons in the toolbar. Notice what is on the menu bar here. And notice where the search bar is over here on the right. And then notice what defaults are in your binder over here on the left. And then we'll take a look at the inspector. 
and in the notes area, it's synopsis, general me metadata, and then your document notes. Now in Scrivener 3, it looks different. Notice that the icons on the toolbar are smaller and um, more streamlined. They're more sleek, I guess you'd call it. There are a couple of more options on your menu bar. There's a notes folder now over here in your binder. And again, your binder uh, icons are a little bit um, more sleek. You have a search bar here in the middle of your toolbar instead of over on the right. And then if I open the inspector, the big thing you'll notice is that the metadata area is missing, except some of the metadata is now down here. So the label and the status are now at the bottom. And for those of you who are curious, let's go over to the Mac version and see what Scrivener 3 looks like on that side. As you can see, it's pretty similar to Scrivener 3 in Windows. There's a slight difference in some of the styling as far as the Windows version, like the search box is a little bit more square. Um, and ignore the toolbar on here because I have customized the toolbar to my needs because this is the working version that I use. But as you can see, the binder and the editor window are very much the same as the Windows version now. And then if you go over to the inspector, it's again, very similar. And again, I've customized this so I have lines under my notes section. A plus is that if you work both between a Mac and a PC, now your files are much more compatible, Scrivener 3 to each other, and you'll be working in a similar interface. Okay, you're all set. Enjoy Scrivener 3, and I'll see you in the next video.